I'm back with my very first crochet style of 2019. It's braidless, it's undetectable, it's even detachable. Yes, you can take this off your head. You can do it yourself too, and you never have to worry about cutting your own hair. Make sure you guys stay tuned because you don't want to miss this. Oh yeah, shake body. <laughs> Now I was going for an ombre kind of duo tone so I'm using the ringlet wand curl colors in 530 and 99J and you need about one to one and a half packs and when you're picking the right foundation it's all about the integrity how long you want it to last and you know what's your intention with this you do have several options based on budget or what's accessible to you but for me the crochet cap with combs is definitely where it's at. You guys are gonna see me do some crazy stuff with this today. So if you guys remember, if you've been rocking with me for a while, this is my very first detachable braidless crochet style. You can click the card in the top right corner to see the original tutorial, but I'm using this to create the crochet pattern, so to speak. You know, if you're sewing and you need like a pattern for your clothes, it's the same kind of concept. Just make sure that you guys like line up the edge of the detachable piece with the seam of the crochet cap. And you don't wanna overstretch the piece that you're using because you want it to be a more accurate fit. And you definitely want to use T-pins to secure the piece in place as you're cutting. And remember, you don't want to cut the seam off. You want to leave it on, so cut on the outsides of the seam. And it's as easy as that. That's how we're creating sort of our crochet pattern that we're going to follow. This is so easy. Like, let's keep it up. Now once you're done cutting away the excess material, you guys will see that I managed to keep the combs attached to the cap, which is really important because it's going to be our anchor and this piece is about five and a half inches wide and seven and a half inches long, just for reference. So you want to take this and secure it back on the canvas blockhead and I'm going to separate the curls about one to two times so that I end up with either two or three pieces. If you're not afraid of frizz, you can do more. But if you want fuller, more defined curls, you don't have to separate them too much, but that means you may need more packs of hair. So keep your budget in mind when you're doing this. Now I'm using my latch hook to crochet the knots about one and a half to one finger widths apart. You don't want to make it too crowded at the back. And you definitely want to make it a point of using the latch hook to crochet through or under the seam. You definitely want hair on the perimeter of your crochet pattern. Give you guys sort of like a reference. You can create rows of crochet about two finger widths apart. Again, it's not important to crowd the back of this piece because where the combs are is going to act as the front. You can do this in reverse. You definitely don't have to follow my exact instructions, but where the combs are, that's going to be the front of the piece for this style. Now, first of all, I love this color. I think it's so gorgeous. I really like how the colors came out. It looks like Cruella de Vilish, kind of like that split kind of color. I was feeling it. I think it's bold, it's perfect for Valentine's Day. You get me. Now, as you guys near the crown or where the beginning of the lace part is you want to start positioning your knots much closer together it's not important that you all crochet through the parting space to hide it you definitely do not have to do that that can also alter the width of the crochet pattern so keep that in mind And I only crocheted through two holes when I was trying to conceal the very, very beginning of the lace parting. Again, at the area where the crown usually is, you want to pack in the hair as much as possible so that your mohawk doesn't look flat or as if it doesn't have a lot of volume. At this point,
point I was crocheting in the color 99J. I did not have a lot of this. I'm using leftover here. I love just using what I have. I did kind of panic a little bit, but see, you guys never get to see that. So I started separating the hair like crazy just to make sure that I had enough, but I used everything that I had to make this work. And you definitely want to make sure that you're crocheting the hair near the combs where we're going to anchor the hair in. But can't you guys see the vision? You see the mohawk It's coming together. Like, this is beautiful. I love the color. Okay, so my hair is a catastrophe. It's nothing new. Wash day is near. But I'm taking some apricot oil and I'm going to take the time to moisturize and massage my scalp. I probably haven't done it in a long enough time, but you know, here's for lost times. And I'm taking this carrot oil based moisturizer and I'm going to moisturize the length of my hair along with the very ends. Definitely make sure you're doing this. And I'm using these thick scrunchies that I found at the beauty supply store, but I'm actually going to use a little bit of the apricot oil and rub it onto the scrunchie because I want as little breakage as possible. My ends, they're hurting right now, so we have to be very careful. Um, again, wash day is near, don't come for me. I'm just not gonna stress my hair out and use a comb. But again, my ponytail is super high up. I definitely recommend this for this mohawk style. Now you're like, but Pink, you didn't even sleek your edges. No, we're gonna take a shortcut. We want this to be like a no fuss style. So I'm just taking the Edge Booster by Style Factor along with a little bit of water and just slicking the hair up. It's just that simple. Water, moisture, and some holding gel or pomade is the way to go when you need your hair to be slicked down. And of course you can lay your baby hairs, but it's not that serious. To be honest, the front of the mohawk is gonna cover the front of your head, so you don't have to get carried away. I'm gonna set this for about 15 to 20 minutes, and in the meantime, I'm going to twist the front portion of my ponytail and pull it towards the front. You want your twist to kind of simulate or kind of replicate the flow of a mohawk, just twist it onto your hair if you get what I'm saying, so that you can add more volume to the mohawk when we finally install it. Now after about 20, 30 minutes, I'm going to take the very front of the crochet pattern or our foundation, and I'm gonna use the combs to anchor this towards the front of my hair. Don't put it too close to the perimeter hairline. You don't need to. But what I found is that these combs really aren't that sturdy. Like I needed to use bobby pins and insert them perpendicular to the combs, if you get what I'm saying, because you have to secure the combs in place. So that's something that I kind of noticed. But at the back where the corners of the crochet cap are, you want to use bobby pins to secure it in place. And you also want to use bobby pins to secure the sides of the mohawk or the crochet cap. I already saw the vision. I was already falling in love. I really like the way this style came out. But as with any mohawk style that I do, it's really important to pull the hair over to the opposite extreme and towards the middle, you want to bobby pin it into place. Now I will admit this hair is not as tightly coiled as other hair that I've used when doing a mohawk. So I had to use quite a bit more bobby pins. I would say use the long, long bobby pins to really help and make this easier. I was using the shorter kind and then I kind of caught on towards the end. And again, the reason why you want to bobby pin it in place is so that you're creating height and it actually starts to create the illusion of a mohawk. Now I know most of you guys really want to see more of me like trimming the mohawk, but to me it's second nature. Look into a mirror, that's all I do. I pin the hair 
see where it falls and my goal is never to cut too much because it's better to leave excess length than to cut away too much and when it comes to the front of my face i focus on creating like an inverted triangle because i want the length near my nose to be super long in comparison to the hair near my brows you get what i'm saying because i wanted to show off my brows i mean as much as i could But I'm just putting the final touches on. I did cut off a considerable amount. Again, this is a lot longer, so it's not as springy as other curl patterns that I've used, but I love it. And I wanted to show you guys a cute little style inspiration with this scarf. Let's say you're wearing this for like the second day and you want to switch it up. It's super easy. Just add a scarf. Super simple. I got this from H&M a couple seasons ago before they did that crazy ad. Um, I don't really shop there anymore, but I can have a few of these scarves that I do recommend in the description box. So be sure to check that out. And honey, I was giving life like this look is so extra. It's so perfect for Valentine's Day. If you wear this, definitely let me know if you get any style inspiration from this. Definitely send me a picture. I would love to see how you slay. Thank you so much for rocking with me. Be sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and then meet me in the comments because I love Kiki and with you all. See you in the next one. Soon as you close the door, turn the lights off. You know what it's sitting for.